Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. This is part three, the final part for today. It's Friday, March 22nd, 2013. First article I have, and we're going to cover uh, the economy, obviously, in this third video. Europe, Russia reject latest Cyprus bailout plan before it's even voted by Parliament. It says a solidarity bailout plan C, or whatever it is, did not do what Germany more than anything wanted to accomplish, which is to punish Russian depositors as this entire farce has been nothing but a political gambit dictated by Germany from the onset. European officials rejected Cyprus' plans for an alternative package to save its banking sector and remain in the euro. Then we have, could Cyprus' gold reserves play a part in the crisis? The Cyprus bailout proposal made by the euro group is both economically and politically absurd, they say. But what if the real reason behind the whole Cyprus crisis is the desire to confiscate the country's gold? The EU, IMF, and ECB are pushing Cyprus into bankruptcy while risking a contagion effect that could lead to the meltdown of the Eurozone. And there's another run on Cyprus ATMs. It says an uh, anxious Cypriots queued outside the popular bank ATM machines to withdraw their cash as fears rose that the country's banking meltdown will mean its second largest bank closes forever. They say it's all about cash now. Only a gambler will take checks in this situation says a retired government official who withdrew money from the bank's ATM. One person said, I have nearly 60,000 euros as savings in this bank and some credit societies. I don't know if I'll ever get it back now. It says, this is what I had, and now it seems that it's all gone. The Cyprus riots begin. There's a live stream. Cyprus police clash with bank employees outside parliament. Also, Cyprus scuffles broadcast live on state-run uh, television. The retirement crisis is here for millions as income inequality now set to wreak its ugly revenge from Forbes. The Employee Benefits Research Institute released a report today highlighting an intense state of insecurity American workers are experiencing as they look forward with ever-increasing trepidation to a retirement without sufficient money to see them through. It says, according to the data, American workers have a very good reason to be afraid, as 57% of American workers currently have less than 25000 in total savings and investments, excluding the value of their homes put aside for retirement. As a result, almost 50% of the nation's workers are either not too confident or not confident at all that they will have sufficient resources to cover the bills in their retirement. It says 75% of the nation's working class had managed to put something away for retirement, in 2009, even if the amount was insufficient to take care of them at the time of increasing prices and raise rising life expectancy. Today, just four years later, that number has fallen to just 66% of workers who have been able to set something aside. Yeah, these dramatic uh, numbers should come as a surprise to nobody as the statistics have long made clear how badly worker incomes have stagnated in America since the 1970s. There's a survey saying low-wage workers are gloomy about the future. While lower wage American workers have accounted for the lion's share of the job created in 2007 to 2009, a new survey shows that they're also among the most pessimistic about their future career prospects, their job security, and their finances. So the survey of the employees found that high levels of anxiety among those earning $35,000 annually, yeah, $35, annually or less. Many of these workers say that they're worse off now than they were before or during the recession. So 72% of employers at big companies and 58% at smaller ones say there's a great deal or some opportunity for worker advancement. But the same question to low-wage workers says 67% of low-wage workers said they saw little or no opportunity at their jobs for advancement. Britain to run out of gas reserves, this is for heating, heating gas, in 36 hours. The reserves are running out in 36 hours amid unreasonably cold weather, leaving the country ex uh, expensive foreign imports, it says. So their country's gas storage has less than two days of so supplies left with lower than usual temperatures forcing millions to turn up their heating. It says there is no other Western economy of our size that uses as much gas as we do but has so little storage. They warn the tariffs that are supposed to be enforced are lucky to rise by up to 15% before next winter. On that note, we have Berlin sets 100-year March snow record. High-profile German meteorologist turns a skeptic. I guess a reader commented uh, on a correction that it was a 43-year record, not a 100-year record. They say either way, that's a lot of snow. So today, Focus Magazine reports that Berlin has set a new record for the amount of snow on the ground of the month of March. Because I recall getting a bit agitated a year or so because Young, the same individual 
once repeated the usual global warming rubbish we always hear in the media, but now that Germany has record recorded its fifth colder than normal winter in a row, and Berlin and Hamburg find themselves digging out from record snow, uh, Young apparently has looked at the science and data for himself and now seems to conclude that the CO2 theory indeed is overhyped after all. Obamacare official says, let's just make sure it's not a third world experience. So with time running out before the major provisions of Obama's health care laws that are set to be implemented, the official tasked with making sure the law's key insurance exchanges are up and running is already lowering expectations. He says the time for debating about size of text on the screen or color or is it a world-class user experience? That's what we used to talk about two years ago, said Henry Chow, an official at the Center for Medicaid and Medicaid's Medical Services, overseeing the technology of the exchanges, said at a recent conference, let's just make sure it's not a third-world experience. He also described himself as nervous. His comments, which came at the policy meeting of insurance industry lobbying group America's Health Insurance Plans, were reported. I think it's only prudent to not assume everything is going to work perfectly on day one. Department of Education Kids website quotes Mao Zedong. So a Department of Education Children's website featured a quote Friday from none other than the deceased Chinese communist leader. The quote was still up as of Friday afternoon. Of course, it was taken down. It was on the Kids Zone portion of the National Center for Education Statistics website. It says uh, it is a primary federal entity for collecting and analyzing data related to education in the U.S. and other nations that is located within the Department of Education. So you can see the little code on their website and you can read it right there. So this is interesting. Remember that, uh, I can't remember what it was. The, oh yeah, the t-shirts about real, just real, real heinous little uh, sayings and the company blamed it on algorithm error. The Department of Education issued a statement today to the Blaze calling the quote poorly chosen. It was automatically generated from a database last updated in 2007. So, right, no culpability, no responsibility for it. Oh, it was algorithms. It was the machines. It was the computers. Women's College rejects transgender for being male. They turned down uh, this Mr. Wong or Mrs. Wong because home state considers her a boy. Transgender student had her application to Smith College rejected because a government financial aid form said she was a he reports USA. So born male but identified as a female for years, got this letter in reply. So it says Smith is a woman's college, which means that undergraduate applications to Smith must be female at the time of admission. So, uh, so Wong said, I cried the day my papers came back. I still feel like crying. Civil unions are now legal in Colorado. They say it's a long-awaited moment. That's what the governor tells the crowd. We're going to make history. The bill marks a major shift for a state once dubbed the hate state. So 92 voters backed Amendment 2 calling for a ban on anti-discrimination laws against gays. The Kansas House of Representatives voted 92 to 31 on Wednesday to strengthen protections for unborn babies, saying just one day after rejecting an amendment to the state's late-term abortion ban that would have allowed abortions after 22 weeks in cases of rape or incest. So the Kansas House passes bill saying life begins at fertilization. Britain ponders three persons' embryos to combat genetic diseases. They've given the green light British scientists would be the first to offer treatments letting babies be born with DNA from three people. They would allow radical new treatments for families at the risk of incurable genetic diseases that involve the creation of so-called three-person embryos. I'm not sure if you guys remember this article, Should We Try to Bring Back uh, Extinct Species Back to Life, March 18, 2013. So, so here they go, uh, a step beyond the traditional debate to discuss a concept with more widespread implications. De-extinction is what they call it. It refers to more complete extinction reversal. So instead of just bringing back, say, one woolly mammoth, scientists would bring back a whole population. But I, th I could have sworn that there was like a little baby miniature woolly mammoth that they have actually created already. And then Australia scientists bring extinct frog species back to life for a few days. So Lazarus Project team moves step towards cloning success with gastric brooding frog. So they're kind of already doing it. Stunned couple gets the bubonic plague. The husband slips into coma for nearly 90 days. So the cases of bubonic plague aren't exactly common these days. But when these, uh, basically this... To these two people, this couple on a trip to Manhattan realized it may not be the flu. They went to the doctor. It turned out to be that the plague 
that plague-infected fleas had bitten them back home in New Mexico. It says here that uh, stricken with the infection that killed a third of Europe in the Middle Ages, Tull slipped into a coma for nearly 90 days. As it says, and he developed gangrene. So he had to make the decision to have both of his legs amputated to save his life. So I don't know if you remember this article back from 2009. Scientists researching Black Death dies from infection linked to plague. An American scientist studying the origins of the Black Death has died from an infection related to the plague he was studying. The strain, which had been used as a vaccine in some countries to protect against bubonic plague, is approved by the U.S. government for lab studies. And the last couple articles here, I have biotech firm slips an amendment allowing USDA to overrule courts on genetically engineered crops. So while lawmakers worked on basically the sequestering, Senator Barbara Mikulski, Democrat from Maryland, uh, says here that they allowed a biotech rider to slip into the funding plan known as a continuing resolution, <clears throat> presumably at the behest of biotechnology companies that were rider referred to by some opponents as the Monsanto Protection Act authorizes the USDA to nullify any federal court decisions that bans the use of these uh, genetically modified crops. This could basically uh, undermine the court's ability to safeguard farmers and the environment from potentially hazardous genetically engineered crops. Then lastly, beekeepers sue EPA over failing to stop harmful pesticides. Says beekeepers, conservation, and food campaigners accused the EPA of failing to protect the insects. The U.S. government is being sued by a coalition of beekeepers, uh, basically, over pesticides linked to serious harm in bees. These, uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce it, um, the world's most widely used insecticides are also facing the prospect of the suspension and the European Union after a health commissioner pledged to press on with the proposed ban despite opposition from the UK and Germany. And that's all I have for you guys. Uh, have a good weekend. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.